just worship you.
on the earth. There's no one like our God. Bless the Lord at all times. He is the Lord. sing awesome God awesome God Somebody sing awesome God, awesome God, awesome God, oh, awesome God, awesome God. Lord, you alone, you alone, you are God, oh, God, mighty are Somebody testify, somebody declare how great that God is. Bigger than your problems, bigger, bigger than your sickness. Oh, we stand in awe. Lord, we bow. Lord, we Just lift up your hands and just tell God something. Anything that comes into your mind. Think about your situation. Think about your life. Think about everything that he's brought you through. From the past year until now. From the time that you were born. Think about how great and mighty that God is. That he still looks down upon you. And he still turned up to you. And saved you right where you were. Awesome God. Oh, how great thou art. Because nobody could have saved you. You are God, mighty are your, your miracles, we stand in awe of your grace, of your love, oh Lord. Somebody's receiving their healing right now, and worship, because you know why? Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. You are the miracle working God. Your name is Yahweh. Help me, everybody, sing now. Your name is Yahweh. Somebody's getting Your healed right now. Chains are being broken right now. Don't think about the person standing next to you. Oh, your name, your name is Yahweh. Nobody like your you, God. Your name is Yahweh. You are the miracle working God. Your name is Yahweh. Oh, your name, Lord, your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. You are the Your name is Jesus. Your name is Jesus. 
Jesus of the name every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and underneath the earth. Your name is Jesus. Oh, your name is Jesus. Oh, no other name like your Lord. There's no one, there's no one like you God.
Lord, 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 Lord. I'm satisfied, I'm satisfied just, just to see you glorified. Oh, please take the glory, take the stage, Lord. Have your way.
the hills from where's coming my help my help coming from the lord that's all you need to say God, cause it to fall on someone. Open the floodgates. promises for us in his word. You're not going to leave this place until you receive a touch from God because it's not a man that he shall lie, neither the son of man that he shall repent. As he said, and will he not do it? As he promised, and will he not make it good? That's the Father that we worship. That's the Father that we serve. Even us, as sinners, give good gifts to our children. So why would God heal you? Why would he provide for you? Worship our God. Worship Him. 
of weeds. It deserves your worship. It deserves your worship. It deserves our worship. It's glorious in battle. Unchallengeable in decision. Give God the glory this evening. Give Him the glory. Give God the glory. Give the I am that I am the glory. Give Him praise. Give Him honor. Give Him adoration. He is worthy to be praised. There is none to be compared to Him. He is the one that does great and mighty things without numbers. Worship Him for who He is this evening. Bless the name of the Lord. Adore His holy name. Enter His gates with worship in your heart, in your mouth. Worship Him, the Lord God, our helper. The Lord God, our defender. The Lord God, our banner. Worship Him. He is worthy to be praised. Right? He is worthy to be exalted. He is worthy to be magnified. He is worthy to be glorified. There is none like unto Him. There is none to be compared unto Him. Worship Him in the beauty of His holiness. Worship Him in the beauty of His holiness. Give Him glory. Give Him worship. There is none like unto Him. He is faithful. Worship Him for His faithfulness. Our God is worthy to be praised. In Jesus' name, we worship. Amen. Amen. We want to thank him this evening. Ten lepers came to Jesus for healing. But only one came back to give thanks. And Jesus pointed to that one. He said, were there not ten that were healed? But only one came back. And by giving of thanks... Jesus Christ said, thy faith has made thee whole. Literally speaking, if what he got formerly was a fraction, by saying, coming back to give thanks, Jesus gave him the whole package. We have come here to give thanks to God so that we can get the whole package. Whatever we have seen from January 1 to January 25th is a fraction. The year is still very young. We want to begin to give him thanks for all he has done for us for what he has been doing in our prayer and fasting forum every night we've been praying every night we've been interceding and we've been hearing testimonies let's give him thanks for what he has done thank him for what he has done in your life thank him for what he has done in your family thank him for what he's doing in your career thank him even for that thing that you are still expecting give him glory because he's able and more than able bible say thou art holy O god that inhabits the praises of your people he is worth to be praised worship him for who he is this morning this evening give him thanks give him thanks the more you give thanks the more you get the package needed the whole package that can sustain you for the remaining part of the year worship the lord give him glory give him praise Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray today is the second day of the revival and we want to pray our way through to revival as we trust the Lord this evening he said without no revivals he said after two days we shall be revived and on the third day we shall rise and we shall live and we, because Jesus our master live we shall live in Jesus name I said because he live we shall live in Jesus name Jesus is in his house this evening and he will not pass you by. He will not pass you by. Bland Bartimaeus cried. He said, thou son of David, have mercy on me. We'll take this song and we'll round off this prayer section. What are those things that are bothering your mind? This is the second day of the revival. The song says, I won't let go. I won't let go. Jesus visit me tonight. I won't let go, I won't let go, I won't let go, Jesus visit me tonight, I won't let go. What about you? I won't let go, I won't let go, Jesus visit me tonight, I won't let go, 
It is my time for rambe true. Jesus, visit me tonight. I won't let go. I won't let go. I won't let go. Jesus, visit me tonight. I won't let go. It is my time. It is my turn. Jesus, visit me today. I won't let go. Is it your time? It is my time. It is my turn. Jesus, visit me tonight. I won't let go. Jesus, visit me tonight. I won't let go. Jesus, visit me tonight. I won't let. I say, Jesus, visit me tonight. I won't. Tell it the Lord and say, I won't let go. Visit me tonight. What are the things that need visitation in your life? The Lord will do us. The Lord will do it. He will visit every one of us. But they need death to be true of the hour in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. A breakthrough. Amen. A supernatural breakthrough. Amen. The Lord will answer our prayers in Jesus' name. Turn to your neighbor, you are welcome to your season of breakthrough. You are welcome to your season of breakthrough. This is your year of breakthrough. And the Lord will seal it for us in Jesus' name. Let us have our seat in his presence. Bible says in the presence of the Lord there is what? Fullness of joy. So if there is any emptiness, spiritual emptiness, financial emptiness, career emptiness tonight, in his presence there will be fullness. Every empty vessel will be filled tonight in Jesus' name. And it's a fullness of joy. So where there is sorrow, the sorrow will be replaced with joy. Amen. Sadness will be replaced with joy. Amen. Weeping will be replaced with joy. Amen. And so shall it be for us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 This Deeper Life Bible Church, Washington, D.C. is always a pleasure to recognize people who are worshiping with us or fellowshipping with us, especially in this era of supernatural breakthrough. So if you are in the house this evening and you are just oh, heeded the invitation, can you just signify by raising up your hand? We want to bring our pastor's greetings to you. Anyone in the house this evening, you have been invited and you honor the invitation. You've been invited, you honor the invitation. Where are you? Praise the Lord. You can go and do a little bit better by standing up for better recognition. And what do you say to them, church? Anybody in the church? You are coming for the first time, please be on your you feet for better welcome. recognition. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. Welcome, you are welcome in the name of the Lord. You are welcome, you are welcome in the name of the Lord. We can see, we can see all over you the glory. Welcome in the name of the Lord in Jesus' name. And as we have sung, we can see all over you the glory of the Lord. And that glory will be resident in your life in Jesus' name. Our mutual prayer for you is that God will establish your feet in his glory. And so shall it be for you in Jesus' name. So to serve us, uh, to uh, intimate our guests, which what is, we are passing through now, we are in the era of supernatural breakthrough. And that supernatural breakthrough will be your portion as well in Jesus' name. And to serve as a reminder to the church, it is not yet over. Tell your neighbor, it is not yet over. Not yet over. The grand finale still comes tomorrow. And don't forget that you don't get rewarded for what you start. Neither do you get any award for what you continue. Grand awards are given at grand finale. So you need to come tomorrow for the grand finale, for the grand package. So tomorrow, please come around for the grand package. And as you join us, Every one of us will have a taste of that grand package in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So please come around tomorrow. Let's invite our neighbors. Let's invite our friends, our co-workers. And as we do, the Lord will honor, uh, the, the Lord will honor our, our, our charge, our request to invite them. And they will heed our invitation in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you believe they are coming, say Amen.
we will not let go. We will not go. We will not let God go on them until they come in Jesus' name. Though the revival service that we are passing through now, hence tomorrow, the prayer and fasting continues. Tell your neighbor, don't give up. Don't give up. The Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall what? Shall renew their strength. It is by waiting upon God, by waiting on the immortal God. It is how much we wait on the immortal God that determines how much we weigh among mortal men. There's no for her to continue to wait upon God. So if you have not joined this waiting period of this period of prayer and fasting, please admonish you. The more you wait, the more you command spiritual weight to withstand the waves and the storms of life. It is time for us to wait upon the Lord. It is we are left with five days. It's never too late for you to join. And as you join, great will be your blessings in Jesus' name. I said, great will be our blessings in Jesus' name. We we'll quickly want to intimate us with our days of fellowship. Every week we meet three times for a day of worship. A day of worship on Sunday worship service by 9 a.m. where we come together to seek the face of God in true worship. And of course, we we'll also search the scriptures, which is also known as the Sunday school. So we want to encourage our guests to please join us every Sunday by 9 a.m. And as you come, great will be your blessings as well in Jesus' name. Monday is another day of fellowship. We call it the Monday Bible study. We live in a time of conflicting factors that are of conflicting interest to our spiritual health. It is the word of God that keeps us alive and keep us watching. So we want to appeal to every one of us to make ourselves available every Monday for the Monday Bible study, which is being handled by the general superintendent of this church. Please come around every Monday, and the Lord God of heaven will equip you with the knowledge of the word that can sustain you spiritually for the remaining part of the year and beyond in Jesus' name. Friday is another day of fellowship. We call it the Friday Revival Hour and Evangelism Training Service. It is a time when we come to pray and to get revival. As we are praying this weekend for supernatural breakthrough, we always come around every Friday for a period of revival. It is revival that positions us for the supernatural power and also put us, give us superior position against the oppositions of life. Opposition simply means opposite position. But when you come for Friday revival hour, you get the power that position you against those opposite, opposite forces. Come around Friday revival, and every one of us this year, the Lord will give us the revival that will carry us through for the remaining part of the year in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Are you tired? No. Don't be tired. Tell me, don't be tired. Don't be tired. We'll still rise up on our feet while we are waiting quiet to come and sing for us. They are still going to give us, lead us into the second round of praises. And as we sing praises, as we sing to the beauty of his holiness, as we sing in his presence, the Lord God of heaven will descend into our midst and that we wander in our midst in Jesus' name. I said that we wander in our midst in Jesus' name. The Lord God of heaven will descend in our midst and there will be, every one of us will have a personal encounter with the Savior in Jesus' name. So happy listening. Happy listening. to praise God this evening. Yes. Can we please rise to our feet? We are going to bless the name of the Lord like never before. Yes. See your blessing in front of you and bless God for that blessing. See your breakthrough in front of you and bless God for that breakthrough. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Our hands to the Lord. Day he has made, I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in the Lord. I will rejoice and be glad. I lift up my voice to give praise to the Lord. This is the day he has made. This is the day he has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in the Lord. I will rej
rejoice and be glad. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad. I lift up my voice. Lift up my voice.
Your reason. 
want to know who has the final say. Jehovah has the final say. No matter what the doctor says. Jehovah has the final say. No matter what the government says. Jehovah has the final say. No matter what your situation says. Jehovah turns, Jehovah turns, sing hallelujah. You hear me? I want you to sing it because the God that we serve, he is a miracle working God. Hallelujah. He will never fail. He will never fail. Are you ready? Hallelujah. Halle, hallelujah. He's the God of miracles. Hallelujah. Everybody. Hallelujah. Halle, hallelujah. He's the God of miracles. Hallelujah. 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 He's the God of miracles. Hallelujah. 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 He's the God of miracles. Hallelujah. We serve a miracle. 
miracle-working God. There is nothing too hard for Him. When He speaks, He shows signs and wonders. We serve a miracle-working. We serve a miracle. There is nothing too hard for Him. When He speaks, He works signs and wonders. We serve a miracle-working. Oh, walking God. walking God, there is nothing there too, is hard too hard for him. For him. When he speaks, he shows us the wonders. We serve a miracle working. The God I serve, I serve, is a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. He will never fail. God I serve is a miracle working God. He's a miracle working He will never fail. He will never fail. Hallelujah. 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 He's a God of miracles. Breakthrough, amen. Bible says, and when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushment against the children of Harmon. As we have sung, the Lord is already setting ambushment against all those things that are challenging your life in Jesus' name. That sickness, those symptoms, those cells, your wanted cells in your body, the Lord is setting ambushment against them in Jesus' name. We want to prepare the ground. For the minister of God. A minister of God is coming with high voltage power behind the pulpit. Get it right, brethren. Amen. And the anointing will reach to you in Jesus' name. He's coming to the pulpit this evening to pull people out of pitch. Pulpit is a two syllable word, it means pull out of pitch. If you find yourself in any financial pitch, any career pitch, pit of mediocrity, pit of cancer, Whatever pit of sickness that they have discovered, he is coming to pull you out of that pit. And the anointing will pull everybody out of the pit in Jesus' name. Now, before he comes up, we want to prepare ourselves. When somebody falls into pit, the person has to release himself from any shackle that is hindering him. So that the person throwing the rope to, re to pull you up can drag you easily. So we want to release our children from the spirit of waywardness. From the pit of waywardness. We want to release ourselves from every shackle that is holding us down to mediocrity. And you will declare, Bible says, Thou shalt decree a thing, and shall be what? You will say, I release myself from every mediocrity. I release myself from the pit of financial crisis. I release my daughter from the pit of waywardness. I release my son from the pit of waywardness. I release my church from stagnation. I release my district from retrogression. I release my family. I release my career from mediocrity. Release yourself. And the anointed man of God comes to the pulpit this evening. He will just come to pull you out of that pit. For release, 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 release. Release yourself. Release yourself. Release your son. Release your daughter. Release your career. Release Release your future. Release, release, release yourself from generational from every generational cause. Release yourself, and the anointing will come on the pulpit this evening. And so shall it be. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Bible says, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that He might destroy the works of the devil. And Jesus will honor Himself and manifest Himself in our midst this evening. In Jesus' name, join me as we welcome the man of God to the pulpit. Pastor Hati, God bless you. Hattie. Amen. Amen. Nothing prayers cannot do. Answers prayers, nothing prayers cannot do. Jesus has us prayer, nothing prayers cannot do. 
Jesus answers prayers, nothing prayers cannot do. Jesus answers prayer. Let's begin to pray at this moment. There is nothing that prayers cannot do. Yesterday we are told how we can prevail through prayers. Hallelujah. Just open your mouth and begin to call upon the name of the Lord at this moment. This is your day of deliverance, of breakthrough, a time to prevail. Hallelujah. The God who remember Hannah will remember you today. In the name of Jesus. You were born again to reign. You were redeemed to rule. We were told yesterday. It is now time for you to rule and to reign and to have dominion. Hallelujah. You cannot live here as you came in tonight. Because I believe God is here tonight to give you victory. Hallelujah. There is nothing that prayers cannot do. Because if thou canst believe, all things are possible. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. I just want you to pray. Prepare yourself to receive that which God has for you this night. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Thank you, Father. We bless you. The deliverance has taken place already. Because when Paul and Silas were praising the Lord, the Bible says there was an earthquake. Their chains were broken. They were let loose. Tonight you are loose. You are free. In the name of Jesus. Father, we have come before you. I just ask, come and honor your word. Lord, come and honor your word. You said your word will not return to you void. Your word will fulfill the purpose for which it is sent. Tonight, I pray, as your word goes forth, let there be healing in this place. Yeah. Let there be deliverance in this place. Yeah. Let there be salvation in this place. Yeah. Let there be holiness in this place. Yeah. Holy Spirit, take over. Yeah. Thank you, Father. I pray the blood of Jesus Christ upon this congregation. You spirit of unbelief, I bind you. Yeah. I resist you. Yeah. Lose your hold. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. There's a scripture I would like us to read first before we go to the topic this evening. You know, in Second King chapter one, Second King chapter one, here was a question that a prophet asked. And God sent him to go and ask this question. Second Kings chapter 1, verse 16. In verse 16, and he said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, For as much as thou hast sent messenger to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron, is it not because there is no God in Israel to inquire of his word? Therefore thou shall not come forth down off that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. This is not for us. But why did I read this scripture? You know, I felt in my mind that the region of Asia has organized this because you have seen the need in the region. So it's wondering why will people in deeper life go to other places to be asking for help? Is there no more power in deeper life? There's a church of power. Wearing our flyers, we're taking to people in hospital and they got healed. Where is that God today? 
wearing ushers in the church. A layman was coming to the church. They brought him into the car. Usher was telling the people, come out. They said, no, he can't walk. The usher said, come out. And as the man obeyed the usher, the man began to walk. In deeper life, not a pastor. But today, deeper life pastors are going to other places to ask for help. Where's the power of God? Is there no more power in the church of God? Jeremiah chapter 8. Jeremiah chapter 8. In Jeremiah chapter 8, I read verse 22. Jeremiah 8, 22. Here again we are told is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughters of my people recovered? Is there no balm in Gilead? Why is that people in this church are not getting healed? Why are the problems lingering in our lives? What has happened to us as a church? And so this weekend, if you remain as you are, it is your fault. Because this meeting was organized so that you can have your freedom. And yes, they were told that you can prevail when you pray. God's power has not changed. Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he did it in a time of old, he's still alive to do it again. You know, I wrote down yesterday. And the man of God told us yesterday that you were born to reign. When you were born again, you, you, what you lost, you were redeemed to rule. But why are we feeble? Why are we afraid of witches? They were afraid of us before. But now we're afraid of them. Over enemies of supernatural breakthrough triumphing over enemies. In other words, whatever that is contrary to you, there is a power residing in you with which you can triumph over those enemies. Unfortunately, most of us, those power, our ministers also can exercise the gift that is in them. That's the purpose. You know, some of us are pastors, we are sitting down, maybe this next time will be your turn to stand up. But before you come to your next time, begin to manifest the power that is in you already. You know, when God saved you, he equipped you with gifts. But why is that we are allowing those gifts to lie dormant in our locations, in our life? Preaching to myself first. But we're talking about triumphing over enemies of supernatural breakthrough. You can have victory over the power that are contrary to you. What does it mean to triumph? To triumph means succeeding. It means winning. It means prevailing. It means overcoming. It means carrying the day. It's like winning a trophy. That's what it means to triumph. Supernatural enemies, spiritual beings that are resisting you, you can triumph over them. But what is the enemy? Enemy means opponent, adversary, foes, rivals, competitors. Those are enemies. Jesus told us about the activities of the enemy. He said he came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Unfortunately, a lot of Christians have been killed by the enemy where they are not supposed to. But today, you have the victory that God has destined for you. In Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 10, look at some of the works of the enemy, what he does. Luke 10. Verse 30. I read verse 30. Luke chapter 10, verse 30. Here we are told about individual. He said, Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him off of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. A lot of Christians are half dead. They are alive as if they are not alive. A lot of us, we are suffering unnecessarily because enemy has stripped off what we are coming to this world with. You know, as I read this story, you know, it came to my mind that, you know, most of us, some of us, the route in which we take to this world, we took to come to this world, you know, have been littered with enemies. And as a result, when we are coming to this world, we are robbed of what God has given to us. And so we appear in this world empty-handed. But when you were redeemed, you were meant to recover everything that you have been robbed of. 
Unfortunately, some of us, we are living a life as if we have not recovered. But God's record for you is that you have recovered everything. You know, let's look at the activities of the enemy. We said the enemy is an adversary. The one is as opposing you. It's contrary to you. Whatever that is good in your life, you want to rob you of it. That's the works of the enemy. And I said the route that we took to come to this world, we are littered with enemies. An enemy have robbed some of us. You know, now what I mean by that is this. Maybe the parents that gave back to you. You know, what are the things that the enemy uses to rob us? You know, when you are fighting your enemy, one thing you must do is to know the ammunition that the enemy has. That's why nations spy on other nations. They want to know what they are capable of doing. So you have to know what the enemy is capable of doing. What are the instruments that the enemy uses against me? No, there are three instruments that the enemy uses against us. In Jeremiah chapter 50, Jeremiah 50, we're talking about triumphing over enemies of financial breakthrough. Now, what are the instruments that the enemy uses against us? When we know the instrument that the enemy uses, then we can know how to overcome them. In Jeremiah chapter 50, look at this scripture, verse 7. Look at this scripture. You need to know this scripture for yourself because you need to use this scripture. Jeremiah 50, verse 7. All that found them have devoured them. In other words, the enemy have robbed you of everything you have. And their adversary, we said enemies are adversary. And here the scripture said, their adversary said, look at what they said. We offend not because they have sinned against the Lord. You know, this is what the enemy uses. These are the instruments that the enemy uses. He goes to God and says, God, these people cannot be defended because they have sinned against you. Remember, when Israel came out of Egypt in Numbers 25, they could not curse Israel in Numbers 23. But in Numbers 25, Balaam encouraged or canceled Balak. You know what? <laughs> these people, <laughs> there is no sin in them, and so you can't curse them. Because when he prophesied, he said, there is no iniquity in Jacob. Because there is no iniquity in Jacob, you can't curse Jacob. So what you're asking me to do for you, it cannot be done. He said, but you know what? This is what to do. What you need to do is to make sure that their children or their young ones, they are male and female, they come and commit sin with your people. And once they do that, their defense will be broken. I'm telling you, the instrument that the enemy uses against the believers and against humanity is sin. You need to discover this so that you can know how to overcome the enemy. So that you can know how to triumph over the enemy. Here in this case, the Bible says their adversary, means their enemy said, they have sinned. And because they have sinned, they should be judged. And because they have sinned, they should suffer defeat. That was the claim of the enemy. What am I going with this? I'm telling you that there are three things that the devil uses against us as believers. One, sin. Other sin in your own life, or the sin in the life of your parents, unfortunately. For example, the case of Gehazi. For example, we are told that the, the, the leprosy of Gehazi will go through his descendants. So if you came through this world, through the route of Gehazi, no wonder you're having the problem you have. You need to know this so that you know how to overcome it. Maybe it's marital conflict that you are experiencing. Maybe your parents... They committed adultery and they put a curse on them that will destroy my family so your family will be destroyed. And now even though you are a Christian, you are not enjoying your marriage because of what your parents have done. Remember this scripture. They have sinned and their fathers have sinned. Number 26, we are told also, if we shall confess our sins and the iniquities of our fathers, you need to know what your enemy uses against you. Another thing that the enemy uses against us is ignorance. My people perish because they lack knowledge. If you are ignorant of whom you are, you cannot have victory. Some of us, even though God has forgiven us of our sins, we are still going with guilt. And because the enemy has plagued you with guilt, you cannot stand up for your right as a believer. My people, they perish because they lack knowledge. We are talking about the activities of the enemy. What the enemy uses to hinder us from experiencing the supernatural breakthrough that God has destined for us. 
But as believers, God has destined you to have victory. Three things I said the devil uses, the, your own sin, the sin of your parents, and your own ignorance. The devil uses those things against you. But today, victory is our portion. I said victory is our portion. If the devil comes to accuse you that you have done this, there's a scripture also you can read or you can use to counter his accusation. The same Jeremiah 50 verse 20. Here the Bible says, Jeremiah 50 verse 20, the Bible says, In those days and in that time, saith the Lord. He said, The iniquity of Israel shall be sought for, and there shall be none. And the sin of Judah, and they shall not be found, for I will pardon them whom I reserve. So if God has pardoned me, Satan, you have no right to use what God has pardoned me against me. So you counter that when Satan accuses you of something that God has forgiven you of. Let's go on. Today, victory belongs to you. Whatever has plagued you before now, I want to say to you, today is the day of deliverance. You know, if you do not have deliverance today, again, it is your fault. It is not the fault of God. Now, let's look at things that we can use to have the deliverance. There are, we have innumerable ammunitions with which to counter the works of the enemy. You know, when I look at the scripture, so much has been given to us as believers. Unfortunately, we are ignorant of what we have. Let's look at what we can have with which to overcome the enemy. The believer's weapon for triumph and victory. There are a few things I want to talk about. One, you have the name that is above every name. Unfortunately, most believers, because we misuse that name, is not active in our lives. But the Bible says we have given, be given a name that is above every name. Do you know what that means? If only you know what that means, you know, you will not remain where you are. You have a name that is above every name. In other words, when that name goes to heaven, that name cannot be denied in heaven. And in hell, that name cannot be resisted. You have a name that is above every name. You have the blood of Jesus Christ. You know what that blood means? The Bible says the life of the flesh is in the blood. In other words, whatever makes you alive is imbued in the blood of Jesus Christ. If that blood of Jesus Christ is in you, the enemy cannot touch you. Unfortunately, because you are ignorant of the protection you have in the blood, some of us are still being attacked by the evil spirits. It shouldn't be. You know, the devil cannot pass through the blood. Why? It is the blood that defeated the devil. You know why? The Bible said, the soul of sinners shall die. The wages of sin is dead. But Jesus did not sin. And yet he died. In his death, the devil dies. In his death, he conquered death. Why should Christians die young? It shouldn't be. It is ignorance that makes us to die young as Christians. It shouldn't be. Because Jesus has died your death. He died young so that you can live long. Are you afraid of death? It's not your portion. You are afraid of death because you are ignorant of whom you are. Jesus has died your death. Death has no power over you anymore. It is only when you agree with fear that you die. If you refuse, like the psalmist said, I shall not die but live. He was declaring it and so he has it. The Bible says he was full of age before he died because he refused to die young. If David, who has not been enjoying the blood of Jesus Christ, will live long, why should I? I refuse to die. Say that to yourself. You refuse to die. It's not your portion. Whatever the doctor has said, that's what the doctor said. But that's not what the word of God says. So tonight, life is your portion. Victory is your portion. I said you have the name of Jesus. You have the blood of Jesus. Another thing you can use with which to triumph over the enemy. Three things here. Apart from the name of Jesus. Apart from the blood of Jesus. You have the power of praying and fasting. Do you know what that means? Praying and fasting, you can prevail. That's why yesterday we were told about prevailing through prayer. In the book of 1 Samuel, look at 1 Samuel chapter 7. 1 Samuel chapter 7, talking about fasting and praying, with which you can prevail. In 1 Samuel chapter 7, I read here 1 Samuel chapter 7, 
I'm reading verse 4 through to 13. 1 Samuel 7, verse 4. Talking about prevailing through praying and fasting, with which you can triumph over the enemy, the weapon with which you can have victory. Here in verse 4, I read, Then the children of Israel did put away Balin and Asteroth, and served the Lord only. And Samuel said, Gather all Israel to Mispeh, and I will pray for you unto the Lord. And they gathered together the, to Mispeh, and drew water and poured it out before the Lord, and fasted on that day, and said, There we shall sin, there we have seen against the Lord, and Samuel judged the children of Israel in Mispeh. And when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel were gathered together to Mispeh, the Lord of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the children of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines. And the children of Israel said to Samuel, Cease not to pray, to cry unto the Lord our God for us, that he will save us out of the hand of the Philistines. And Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it up for a burnt offering unto, holy unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel. And the Lord heard him. The Lord will hear you tonight. The Lord have heard you already. And as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines and discomfited them. And they were smitten before Israel. Your enemy will be smitten before you. Yeah. Victory belongs to you. You see, the praying and fasting that you have done from first day of this year to this day, they are not in vain. You have prevailed already. But there is something you need to do. If you want that prevailing to be established in your life, the victory that God has given you, if you want to actualize it in your life, there is something you need to do here. In this case, they fasted with confessing their sins and the sin of their fathers. I said originally, the weapon that the enemy uses is sin. So, praying and fasting with sin will not give you victory. So, when you are praying, you are examining yourself. What is it in me that is not pleasing to you? You repent of it. And as you repent of it, God sees that you are contrite in your heart. And God will arise on your behalf. In this case, God thundered from heaven. And the Philistines were discomfited. If you make your ways right with God, when God comes to your aid, victory will be your portion. So apart from praying and fasting, there's something also we need to do to have victory. We look at, if we look at pray, people who prevail and through praying and fasting, we can mention here somewhere. We can mention Ezra in the book of Ezra chapter 8 verse 21 to 23. We can mention Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 1 to 11. Those people fasted and God answered them. God will answer you. Yeah. Another thing you need to do with which to prevail, with which to triumph over your enemies, is exercising faith in God. You see, we can spend all the day to pray and to preach. If there is no faith, God will not respond. God only responds to faith and not to needs. Unfortunately, the way God operates is that he responds to faith and not to needs. God sees the need. Jesus knows, said, your heavenly father knows that you are in need of these things. He knows your needs. But God wants you to act in faith. Because according to your faith. Look at Mark chapter 5. Talking about the weapons we will we triumph over the enemy. Apart from praying and fasting. Here we are told in Mark chapter 5, verse 34. Mark 5, 34. I read. Look at this in verse 34. Here the scripture says, And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Tonight, if only you will exercise faith. What is faith, by the way? Faith is aligning yourself with God. Believing what God says about you. You agree with God. This is what God says about me, for example. God said I shall not die but live. And so I believe God. God said when I am married I will not be barren. I will be fruitful. I believe God. 
What does the doctor say? The doctor says something contrary. But God says something contrary to what the doctor says. I align myself with what God says. That is faith. Tonight, what has the enemy said? What has somebody said about you? And you are afraid of it. Why don't you come to the side of God? And look at the scripture. What does the scripture say about this? With that, when you align yourself with God, and God sees that in you, God will act on your behalf. You know, in this case, it was the woman who determined her deliverance, her healing. It was not even Jesus Christ. You know, sometimes we blame other people. You know, maybe they don't have power. You have power already in you. If only you will exercise faith in God. Tonight, if you will exercise faith in God, healing is your portion. I said healing is your portion. Look at this Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. In Ephesians chapter 3, here we are told about whom you are, if only you will know whom you are. I read verse 20, Ephesians 3, 20. He said, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. There is a power in you that God deposited in you when he saved you. What does it mean when the scripture says, I stand at the doors and I knock. If any man will open the door of his heart to me, I will come in and I will sup with him. What does that mean? If Jesus is in you, there is power in you. You are saved by the Holy Spirit. If the Spirit of God dwells in you, the Bible says he quickens your mortal body. There is a power of the triune God in you. Because your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. God dwells in you. The creator of the universe dwells in you. Unfortunately, we don't allow him to walk in us. Because of unbelief. Because of sin. But today, if you will put away sin, if you will put away unbelief, if you will exercise faith in God this night, there is a power in you. That the devil cannot stand. Thiel Osborne said he was afraid of the devil or he discovered that the devil was afraid of him. Do you know that the devil is afraid of you? But unfortunately, you are afraid of the devil. And because you are afraid of the devil, the Bible says, as a roaring oh, lion is threatening you, he can't do you any harm. Because your life is hidden with God, hidden with Christ in God. You are inside of Christ. And Christ is inside of God. The devil, before he can get access to you, he would have passed through God, passed through the Holy Spirit, passed through Christ before he can get to you. Do you know whom you are? Do you know whom you are? There's life in you. When God made a man in his own image, what does that mean? He made you a little God. The Bible says, ye are gods. In other words, you have the power to create. That leads me to the third thing we're going to consider. We're talking about how to prevail. One, through prayer and fasting. Two, faith in God. Three, you know, three is foretelling and praise. What does it mean to foretell? To foretell is to say it before you see it. And see it before you say it. What does that mean? What do you want from life? What do you, at this present status in which you are, what next do you want? Ministers, what level do you want to go to? Members of the church, what level do you want to go to in your life? Couples, do you want to enjoy your marriage? Speak what you want. That is for telling. You are telling the future. What you want in the future is what you are asking to come to you. God, the creator of the universe, before anything came into existence, he said, let there be, and it came to be. And you have the same power. You know, when I read the scripture some time ago, you know, Elijah came to Ahab and he said, by my word. He didn't say by the word of God. Elijah didn't say, God said to me. Elijah said, by my word, there shall be no rain. And it was so. When God sees faith in you, God honors what you say. But some of us were waiting for God and God is waiting for us. You have the power to create. When Jesus saw the storm in the sea, Jesus said, peace be still. And they wondered. And Jesus himself was wondering, you also can do this. Why are you not doing it? 
When Jesus saw the crying, he said, you know, you, you are not supposed to. You are not subject to death. Unfortunately, you have allowed it. What I'm saying to you today is this. You have the power to create. You can create what you want. The Bible says, life and death are in the power of the tongue. In other words, whatever you want, you can pronounce it and you can have it. Because Jesus said, if you say to this mountain, be down removed. And you do not doubt. You will have whatsoever you say. Jesus had given the authority. It's like a black check. You know, write on it whatever you want. Jesus said, whatsoever you say. So I say to this, I refuse to be poor. I refuse to remain in this level. I refuse to fail. Students who are here this evening or this afternoon, you're having difficulties in your exam. It should be. I said it should not be. Because you have the power to decree what you want. If that teacher is so mean and he wants to fail you, you can send that teacher away. By your word, somebody is laughing. It's true. Because whatsoever you say, you can go to God and say, God, this is what you said. And so I said that this teacher that is giving problems will be transferred. If you believe it, it will be so. Those of us, sometimes they write prayer requests at my job. They want to fire me. Who will fire you? Who will fire you? You are the one firing yourself because that is what you are saying. But if you decree that this person, you are giving me a problem, <laughs> you know, go another place. The person will resign and go to another place. And church, you are sick. And, you know, most of us, we just give up. That is why people die. It's because they give up. Even the unbelievers, some of them, when they refuse to die, they don't die. They survive cancer. Why should believers survive cancer? What I'm saying to you today is this, decree what you want. That's the foretelling. You say this is what I want, and God will honor what you say. Jesus said, if you say to the mountain, be thou removed, it will be so to you. What do you want tonight? Another thing that can make us to prevail is praise and worship. You know, praise and worship. You know, unfortunately, some of us, praise and worship is like we are wasting time. It's like we are trying to make up time. If you praise God from the depth of your heart, the Bible says God inhabits the praises of his people. So tonight, if you have the heart to praise God, there is power here tonight to bring healing unto you. I say there is a power here tonight to bring healing unto you. But before we pray, I want us to pray for this prayer point. Prayer point number one. You are going to repent of your own sin. And of the sins of your fathers and of your mothers. Because they are tools in the hand of the enemy. The enemy said, the adversary of God's people said, they have sinned against their God. That's what the enemy uses. When we sin, God forgives us. But the devil does not forgive us. So, how do you counter him when he's coming to accuse you? You go back to God and say, God, I repent of this sin. I'm sorry that I've ever done this. And when you repent of that, I repent and renounce the iniquities of my fathers. And any iniquity that I've committed, God forgive me. When God forgives you, the devil has no right anymore to use that against you. And after you have done that, you are going to pray for yourself. Any covenant that I have made with the enemy, knowingly or unknowingly, under the oath of faithfulness to the Lord Jesus Christ, by whose blood I am redeemed, I break every evil covenant that I have ever made with the enemy. Or any covenant that someone has entered on my behalf, I break those covenants in the name of Jesus. Jesus said, Behold, the blood of the new covenant, and today by my will, I enter into a new covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ through the blood of my redemption. When you do that, the blood of Jesus Christ, now speak on your behalf. When the devil comes with accusation, the blood of Jesus begins to speak on your behalf. Remember, the blood of Abel. The blood of Abel speaks for vengeance. But the blood of Jesus Christ plead on your behalf. So when you make that covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ tonight, every evil covenant is broken. And the devil can no longer have access to your life. And then you have your victory. And then you have your freedom. 
Let's rise up to pray. Let's rise up. We have a few minutes more. The minutes we have left, we're going to use it this way. You are here tonight, you are a sinner. Now, Lord, before you came in here, if you have died, you will have gone to hell. That you know for yourself. But you do not want to go to hell. You want God to forgive you tonight. You want your sins to be forgiven you tonight. I would like for you to raise up your hand. All eyes closed. All heads bowed. This is personal moment to have freedom tonight. Please, all heads bow and all eyes closed. But you are here tonight. You know you are a sinner. You know you are a sinner. You have sinned against God. Even tonight, your heart tells you. You say you are a Christian. See what you are doing. See what you have done. But you want God to forgive you. You are doing so so that the devil will not use it against you anymore. If you are here, raise up your hand. And I will pray with you. And I will pray for you tonight. You are here. You know you are a sinner. You be living in secret sin. You know it. But you want God to forgive you. I will pray with you. As you raise up your hand. Believe God. And begin to confess your sin. Name them before God tonight. Whatever it is. Wickedness. Adultery. Fornication. Masturbation. Pornography. Whatever it is. Maybe you belong to a secret court, a gang in the school. Maybe a gang in the neighborhood. Maybe you are a witch. Though you come to church, you know you are a witch. You have evil power. You oppress people. You hinder people's progress. Tonight, you want to be forgiven. Raise up your hand and we'll pray together. Confess it to God. The Bible says because of this, the wrath of God is revealed upon the children of wickedness. But you don't want God to judge you. You want God to forgive you. As you raise up your hand, believe God tonight. There is forgiveness in this place. And when God forgives you, Satan cannot use it against you anymore. In Jesus' name, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. If you are raising up your hands, pray this prayer after me. Dear Lord, I know I have sinned against you. Lord, forgive me of my sins and my transgressions. I repent of my sins. I believe that Jesus died in my stead. Lord, I ask that Jesus come into my heart and to be my Lord and my Savior. Lord, I pray, give me the power so that I will go and see no more. Lord, I repent of the iniquities of my fathers and also of my iniquities. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' name, I pray. Lord, I thank you. I bless you for those tonight who have acknowledged their sins and their transgressions. They have asked for pardon and for forgiveness. Lord, you read to us, we read today from your word, Jeremiah 7, 50 verse 20, that you will pardon their iniquities and their transgressions. Lord, as many as come to you, you will know why it's cast away. As many as have confessed their sin and have turned away. As many as have received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Lord, I pray you forgive them. The power to go and sin no more. Lord, I pray you give to them. Thank you for the answer. For in Jesus' name, we pray. Now before we pray, we want to sing this song. Our covenant keeping God. There is no one like you. Alpha and Omega. There is no one like you. Covenant keeping God. There is no one like you. Alpha and Omega. There is no one. Hallelujah. Covenant keeping God. There is no one like you. Alpha and Omega. There is no one like you. Covenant keeping God. There is no one like you. Alpha and Omega, there is no one like you.
want you to lay your hand upon yourself. You know, you are laying your hand upon yourself for a need in your life. Maybe a need in the life of your loved ones. The Bible said that they shall lay hand on the sick and they shall recover. Tonight, you will recover. I said you will recover. You know, a sister called and said, I went to do mammogram and I was told I have a lung. Pastor, can we pray? Lay your hand there on the phone. Immediately after that, she said, she got the urge to go and use the bathroom. Came from back room and called me back and said, Pastor, something happened. Till today, she's free. Tonight, you are free. I said, you are free. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. Jesus said, be it unto you according to your faith. So lay your hand upon yourself. Believe God tonight. Believe God tonight. There is a miracle here tonight. In the name of Jesus. There is deliverance here tonight. In the name of Jesus. You are having marital issue. You sleep and somebody is coming between you and your husband. Between you and your wife, there is deliverance for you now. In the name of Jesus. Evil husband, I bind you. I banish you from that family. In Jesus' name. A new spirit of infirmity. Appearing in the name of cancer. I resist you. And I command you, lose your hold. Come out in Jesus' name. You are there. You are afraid of death. Death is not your portion. You are thinking of death. You shall not die but live. You spirit of death tormenting that individual. I bind you. Lose your hold in Jesus' name. You spirit of delay in that person's life. I resist you. Every cause behind delay in having children. Every cause behind delay in getting married. Every cause behind delay in making progress. I break that cause. In Jesus' name. Any spirit assigned to a force a cause in your life. I bind that spirit. I resist that spirit. I command that spirit. Lose your hold. In Jesus' name. Father, you said in your word that the desires of the righteous shall be granted. Whatever be the desires of your people, whatever these hands represent in the lives of your people, I ask by the authority in your word that today, this moment, let there be a miracle. Let there be a deliverance. Let there be freedom. Let there be healing. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. We worship. He has given me victory. Lift him higher. Over, I will lift him higher. He has given me victory. I will lift him higher. Given me victory. I will you are sure singing louder. Victory over sin. Victory over sickness. Victory over the enemies that are pursuing your life. I will live in my life. I will live in my Amen. A triumphant Amen. Now you are going to shout the last one and intimidate the enemies. We have heard about triumphing over enemies or supernatural breakthrough. In every game, the shouting side is always the winning side. And we have won. We are not, not that we are winning, we have won. A triumphant amen. amen. So shall it be. So let it be. 
In the name of Jesus. Congratulate your brother and say, Congratulations to you. You have overcome. Victory is your portion. In the name of Jesus. We will be a carrier of his presence, and his presence will always give you victory everywhere you go in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's quickly have our seat in his presence. I pray that our victory will be permanent in Jesus' name. A mutual prayer for the minister that God has used for us, that God will replenish his energy and renew his strength as well in Jesus' name. Himself will be a partaker because he's the husband man. He's always the first partaker of the fruit. He will be a partaker as well in Jesus' name. Amen. We should be reminded that tomorrow is the grand finale. Let's come around tomorrow to put the enemy, the back of the enemy on the ground. We have challenged them today. Tomorrow is the grand finale. Now, get it right. Sometimes ago, this speaker and this keyboard were making noise. And we tried our best to eliminate the noise. But until we brought in an expert who said, this noise cannot go except some unwanted charges are grounded. So we reported the case to our Haro and he intervened. So the, did you, can you hear any noise from them? No, the noise was grounded. And that noise, that was the end. So tomorrow we are coming for the grand finale. There will be anointing to ground any negative charges. Any negative forces that is contending with your life we will put them on the ground. And we'll never hear their noise anymore in Jesus' name. Any cell they have discovered in your body and is still challenging you, tomorrow it will be grounded in the name of Jesus. Come around for the grand finale tomorrow and the anointing will touch you in Jesus' name. Amen. So choir and orchestra are expected to wait after the service. Uh, you are expected to wait in your seat there. Uh, we also want to appeal to us that as we stand up after the grace, please check around any piece of paper, any bottle, anything. Let's pick them up and tidy up the house of God. Let's rise up as we share the grace victoriously. The grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. We shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. 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 So tomorrow we are meeting. What time? They said 9 a.m. But please come around and wet the ground. 8.30 a.m. And soak yourself and prepare yourself tomorrow for the grand finale. And great will be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We've come to the end of the service. Let's endeavor to keep our blessings. <laughs>